Officially, the first programming language for a computer was PlanCalcut, developed by Konrad Zuse for the Z3 between 1943 and 1945. However, it was not implemented until 1998. Since then, hundreds or even thousands of programming languages were created, and even nowadays, many new languages are being born. In today's video, we'll discuss how I made my programming language and how you can make one as well. Let's open up the command prompt and run the index file. Now we can use the log construct to print out results into our console. As you can see, we get the hello world printed out as expected. There are three different ways to assign a variable. First is JavaScript style using the let keyword, the second is backslash and identifier, and the third one is assign value to identifier structure. Every single one of those will have exact same result in the final file. There is also a way to save the value to the storage and be able to use it later. To get it out of the memory stack, we can use that keyword and when we don't need it anymore, we can use the delete structure to free up our memory. If we don't have anything saved in our stack, it will throw an error by pointing to the position of the code that caused the error. Let's remove this and create a function that will return a value of the Pythagoras theorem and we will have over here integers as our arguments. Now we can append it to the document by using another cool feature which is supporting the HTML tags and you also can apply IDs, classes and other attributes to them. To turn any value into an HTML text node, you can use the text construct. We will just pass arguments 3 and 4 to the C function and let's see what result we get. As you can see we got 5 and it's inside of the H1 tag which has all the attributes we passed to it. We can go a step further and attach an event listener to it. For example a click listener which will just console log clicked. Lastly, I will show you the whole power of making your own language. You will never need parentheses or weird constructions where it seems unnecessary. No more semicolons. I always liked JavaScript, but as the majority of developers, I wanted to get more out of it. Now I got rid of the parentheses, no more catch blocks, no semicolons, and new features every time I want them to appear. With this code, we run two for loops and change the TMP variable to match our needs. Basically, we are going to draw a chess board and will still have a readable and clean code. Also, as you can notice, the language has its own syntax highlighting in Visual Studio Code. Cool, isn't it? In the upcoming video, I will break down the structure of this project and will start writing a new one so you can follow along. I will leave the source code down in the description and I'll see you in the next video.